Carbon? In my dinosaurs? It's more likely than you think. The carbon cycle is vital to our everyday life. All living creatures contain carbon, and so do some inorganic materials. Carbon is the fourth most abundant element in our universe, and you can find it in rocks, air, plants, animals, soil, fossil fuels, and the ocean. Hey, boy, oh boy. <clears throat> the carbon cycle traces the path of carbon moving through the Earth's ecosystems. Through this process, the carbon cycle ensures the Earth remains at a livable temperature by preventing carbon from getting trapped in the atmosphere. Thank goodness for the ozone layer, am I right? Unlike some of the other planets, for example Venus, whose atmosphere is over 96% carbon dioxide, making it the hottest planet in our galaxy at over 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, so hot. So hot. So, let's break down the carbon cycle into two timelines, the geological cycle and the biological cycle. The geological cycle is a slow process happening over millions of years as carbon moves from rocks and soil into the ocean and then the atmosphere. This happens through a series of chemical reactions and tectonic activities, that is, volcanic eruptions. Carbon ions in the atmosphere bond with water to create a weak acid called, you guessed it, carbonic acid. This falls from the earth as rain which dissolves rocks and other earth formations. Earth formations. Carbon in the rocks releases into rivers, which carry ions into the ocean, which are then released into the air as carbon dioxide. And the process begins again. The biological carbon cycle is much faster and involves life forms like us. Plants and ocean phytoplankton play a major role in the biological carbon cycle. Using photosynthesis to take in carbon dioxide molecules from the atmosphere, they separate the carbon atom and turn that into sugar, while the oxygen atoms are released back into the air. The plant uses this sugar as food, unless the plant gets eaten by an animal first. The animal turns the plant into energy by consuming its carbohydrates. You guessed it, made of carbon. If the plant dies before being eaten, it will decompose, which releases carbon into the soil with the help of bacterial and fun fungal friends. Over millions of years, decayed matter has the potential to fossilize, like the dinosaurs, which humans then burn as fuel. Burning fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which would normally be absorbed by the ocean over millions of years, thanks to the geological carbon cycle. The other one. The one that takes a really long time. Unfortunately, rates of carbon releasing into the atmosphere have drastically increased with human involvement. By deforestation and fossil fuel emissions, we currently release almost a billion tons of carbon into the atmosphere, according to NASA. The natural process of geological and biological carbon cycles are simply unable to remove that amount of carbon, resulting in the buildup of carbon dioxide and increasing global temperatures. Remember Venus? Yikes. Yikes. That's why, when you hear environmentalists talk about climate change, they mention reducing your carbon footprint. This means doing less things that release carbon into the atmosphere, such as driving cars, burning forests for farmland, and industrial emissions. So, now that you know the science, let's explore the carbon cycle through experiments you can do at home. To demonstrate what happens to shellfish and other crustaceans in acidic oceans and coral reefs, we're gonna leave an egg in vinegar for 48 hours. Get a clear glass so you can watch the results and gently place the egg into the glass. Make sure you pour enough vinegar to cover the egg entirely. The egg might float, so you can give it a gentle poke to rotate it. The bubbles that form on the shell are carbon dioxide, caused from the acidic properties of the vinegar meeting the calcium carbonate of the eggshell. After one to two days, gently remove the egg with a spoon. You'll immediately notice two things. One, the egg is significantly larger than before due to the liquid it has absorbed. Two, and more importantly, the shell has completely dissolved. The egg's inner membrane now holds the raw yolk and egg whites intact. It also bounces like it's made of rubber, but like don't bounce it too hard or the egg will go splat. Of course, 
The ocean is not as acidic as vinegar, but as carbon builds up in the water, you can imagine what that steadily increasing carbonic acid level can do to a living creature. You've probably encountered moldy food at some point in your life, but did you know that mold, that is, decay, is a natural and essential part of the carbon cycle? To recreate the carbon cycle in a closed environment, take regular sandwich bread and put it in an airtight jar. Again, glass so you can see the results without taking off the lid and breaking the seal. Spray your bread with water without completely soaking it. Mold can't grow without moisture. To help speed up the process, spray the inside of the jar with water as well. Next step is replacing the lid and waiting. For me, it took a week for the mold to start growing on my bread, but that depends on how much moisture is in the air of the jar and how fresh the bread is. Um, both of those affect the growth rate. Mold uses the bread as food and can feed on any carbon-based matter. Letting the jar sit for an extended amount of time would let the mold completely consume the bread and then eventually die off, having nothing else to use as a food source. Oh, and you should definitely throw out the bread and clean the jar really well when you're done. Ocean acidification is the ongoing decrease in the pH of the Earth's oceans, caused by the uptake of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This change in pH could be detrimental to the world as we know it. So, let's try and recreate ocean acidification at home. Did you know that every time you breathe, you exhale carbon dioxide? Sure you did, because you are brilliant. But, did you actually know that you can use red cabbage as an indicator of pH? So today we are going to be using a red cabbage, boiling water, salt, and our lung power to recreate ocean acidification on a small scale. The extracted pigment from a boiled red cabbage can be used as an acid base indicator. In its natural purple state, the pH of the cabbage is just around six or seven, or basic. Add in a little pinch of salt to represent the salt water, and now comes the fun part. Start to blow bubbles. Through this action, carbon dioxide is going directly into the little ocean, and over time will start to change the pH balance of the cabbage water. The more bubbles you blow, the more carbon dioxide, and the more the pH shifts and the more drastic the color change will be. This experiment shows the potential shift in the overall pH of the oceans if we do not curve our carbon emissions going straight into our oceans. The carbon cycle can keep everything at a balance, but if we continue to leave a larger carbon footprint, one day our oceans will not be the same as they once were. So now that you know the science and the experiments, how can you reduce your own carbon footprint in your everyday life? Thanks, bye.